let us bow down and pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are forever grateful for giving us your only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our High Priest. Abba Father, open our spiritual hearts and mind to fully comprehend the magnitude and the unspeakable blessings of your Son becoming one like us. We ask this in Christ's muchless name. Amen. When I was in second grade, I dreamt of becoming a lawyer because of an injustice committed against my father. We were very poor, and my father, being a farmer, always borrowed money from, for farm inputs from usurious middlemen. Poor farmers like my father had no choice as they cannot borrow money from the bank for lack of collateral. The middleman imposed his serious interest on the loan, and my father was forced to sell his harvest to the lender middleman at an unfairly low price. So this middleman took advantage of my father twice, usurious interest on his loans and unfairly low price for his harvest. Worse, my father was made to pay his debt twice because he failed to get a receipt on the first time he paid. He did not fight it because he was poor and could not afford a lawyer. He told me it is cheaper to pay again than to get a lawyer as lawyers are expensive. Because of my father's experience, I then took upon myself the obligation to someday become a lawyer for the poor. It was by God's amazing grace, miraculous provision, that I was provided a scholarship grant from Great Britain to study law in the Philippines. During my fourth year college of law, one of my professors told us that the first case we will ever handle is very crucial to our law career. He said that our first case can either make or unmake us. If you win your first case, then it is a great advertisement of your career. However, if you lose, that can be a devastating starting point for your career. In May 1997, I became a lawyer in the Philippines. My first senior partner was the vice mayor of our city. Being a politician, he wanted to please everybody. Hence, he accepted all cases, whether winning or losing. My senior partner accepted the case of Mr. J, who had been rejected by all the other law offices in our city because he had a losing case. Mr. J signed a deed of absolute sale, which he perceived to be a deed of real estate mortgage. The deed covered a parcel of land where his house was built. The insurmountable legal problem was the deed of absolute sale was duly notarized and that his signature was genuine. The only defense was he did not understand what he signed the weakest defense when a document is notarized. I told my senior partner that there is no way we can ever win the case as the law is already against us. My senior partner then told me that this case would be a good starting case for me as normally cases involving land will take forever to be resolved in court. I was hesitant, but I had no choice. However, when I interviewed Mr. J, I discovered the truth that he was taken advantage of, of by a rich and wealthy family because he was poor and uneducated. Mr. J only mortgaged his piece of land to the rich and wealthy family, but what they asked him to sign was a deed of absolute sale. Mr. J did not sign the document in front of the notary public and it was not explained to him what the document is all about. The rich and wealthy family just had the deed notarized later on. 
Mr. J explained to me that he would never sell his parcel of land as this is the only lot he and his family own and this is where the residential house was built. The painful injustice my father experienced flashed back to my memory. The painful stab of injustice cut me like a knife. I felt having a fresh one rubbed by soul. It was so excruciating. I was moved and immediately put myself in Mr. J's shoes. My empathy with Mr. J changed the dynamics of how I handled his case. I became so intense and passionate and gave all my best in fighting the case. I did not care anymore if representing him would mean that a losing case would impact my law career for the rest of my life. Brethren, in our text today, it tells us that our Lord Jesus Christ is our advocate, our high priest. He is the greatest high priest because he is the son of God, the second person in Trinity, fully God and fully man. Being fully man, he can empathize with us. He wears the same shoes that we wear. So if you're looking for the, for the title of today's message, it is the same shoes. Jesus, our high priest, designated by God in the order of Melchizedek. Verse 10 said, and was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Who is Melchizedek? As we read in the scripture, there is no mention of Melchizedek lineage or his parents, so we do not know where he came from. We do know from Revelation 7:3 that Melchizedek, without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life, resembling the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. He first appeared in Genesis, 1, 4, uh, Genesis 14 when Abraham came back from defeating his enemies. Genesis 14, 18, and 20 said, And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God most high, who delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abram gave him a tenth of everything. Melchizedek was also mentioned in Psalm 110, a Psalm of David, referring to a prophecy about our Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 110, 4 said, The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. In Genesis 14, Melchizedek was both a king and a high priest. Being a king and a high priest, Melchizedek was superior to the high priest that came from Aaron's descendants because the latter were only priests and not kings. Our Lord Jesus Christ, being a king, means that he has a kingdom to rule. In John 18.36, Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. Our Lord Jesus Christ is not only a king, but the king of kings. Revelation 17.14 said, They will wage war against the Lamb, but the Lamb will triumph over them because he is the Lord of Lords in the King of Kings, and with him will be his called, chosen, and faithful followers. Let us look deeper at the contrast of the high priest from Aaron's descendants and that of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our text today in Hebrews 5, 1 to 3, every high priest is selected from among the people and is appointed to represent the people in matters related to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to 
deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray, since he himself is subject to weakness. This is why he has to offer sacrifices for his own sins, as well as the sins of the people. A high priest from Aaron's line is sinful. That is why he needs to offer sacrifices for himself and for the people. That's verse 3. Hebrews 9, 7 said, But only the high priest entered the inner room, and that only once a year, and never without blood, which he offered for himself and for the sins of the people had committed in ignorance. The high priest from Aaron's descendants needs to offer the sacrifices for his sins and for the people over and over again. But our Lord Jesus Christ, being our high priest, is sinless and offered himself as a sacrifice for the sins of all humanity once and for all. Hebrews 9, 11, 14, 11, 14 said, But when Christ came as the high priest of good things that are now already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not made with human hands, that is to say, is not part of this creation. He did not in enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood, thus establishing eternal redemption. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of the heifer is sprinkled on those who are ceremonially unclean, sanctify them so that they are outwardly clean. How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself and blemish to God, cleanse our consciences from the acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God? What a high priest and a great king we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. The high priest who is representing us is also our king. How does this truth make you feel? Second point, our Lord Jesus Christ, our high priest, is the son of God, the second person in the Trinity, fully God and fully man. Last October 3, 2021, Tony gave us the message fully explaining about our Lord Jesus Christ being fully God and fully man. Tony pointed out to us that our Lord Jesus Christ needs to become man so that he will be our contact point with God. So if our Lord Jesus Christ is fully God and fully man, what is the impact it has for us? Our Lord Jesus Christ being fully God, he can effectively represent us to God the Father because he is God himself. Our Lord Jesus Christ can articulate well the divine language being God himself. Our Lord Jesus Christ being fully man can fully empathize with us as he knows all about being human. Our frailties, pain, pain suffering, sorrows, weaknesses, and others because he became one like us. He wears the same shoes as us. One of the proofs of Jesus' humanity was at the death of Lazarus. In John 11, verses 33 to 35 said, When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come see, Lord, the reply. Jesus wept. Our Lord Jesus Christ was deeply moved in spirit and troubled by the tears of Mary and those around her. He feels what we feel. Like the song said, he cries when we cry. Our Lord Jesus Christ can articulate well the human language in interceding on our behalf. 
if our Lord Jesus Christ knows exactly what we feel when we have struggles, problems, sickness, pains, and others, what will stop us from always running to him? Third point, our, our, our Lord Jesus Christ, our high priest, has the resurrection power. Our Lord Jesus Christ, our high priest, is not only fully God and fully man. He is also our resurrected Christ sitting at the right hand of God the Father. Ephesians 1 verses 19 to 21 said, And his incomparably great power for us who believe, that power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. Our Lord Jesus Christ has the resurrection power. Dr. Tony Evans defines resurrection, resurrection power as the power to reverse things, take things that are dead and make them alive, take things that are bad, make them good, take defeat, defeat make victory, take losses and wind up with gains. We are all here physically alive, but do we have some deaths? And our lives right now, death means lifeless, not working well or terminal. I'm preaching to myself here. I'm asking myself the following questions. Do I have a dead prayer life? Do I have a dead marriage? Do I have a dead relationship with my siblings and others? Do I have a terminal illness? Is my health not doing well? Do I have a dead bank account? Take courage, my brethren, because our Lord Jesus Christ, our high priest, has the resurrection power to reverse the things in our lives. Our Lord Jesus Christ has the power to revive our prayer life, our marriage, our relationship with siblings and others, our health, our finances, in all the areas of our lives that are dead. A crucial question to ask, how to access our Lord Jesus Christ as our high priest? One way to access our Lord Jesus Christ is through prayer. We can also continuously access our Lord Jesus Christ through studying and meditating in his word and constantly abiding in him. Knowing that our Lord Jesus Christ as our high priest, as fully God, fully man, and clothed with resurrection power, how do we pray? How will this truth about our Lord Jesus Christ revolutionize the way we pray? Matthew 21, 13, our Lord Jesus Christ said that his house shall be called the house of prayer. Then this should, this should also expand to mean that the people of his house should be known as people of prayer. Are we casual or intentional in our prayer? Are we passionate and fervent in our prayers? In our text today, Hebrews 5, verses 7 to 9, during the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. He was hurt because of his reverent submission. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Let us look closely at verses 7 and 9. How did our Lord Jesus Christ pray? Verse 7a, our Lord Jesus Christ offered up prayers and petition with fervent cries and tears. Do we also pray, offer prayers and petition with fervent cries and tears? Why not start doing it? Verses 7b and verse 8, do we have reverent submission, obedience to God the Father like our Lord Jesus Christ? 
our Lord Jesus Christ showed us the example of reverent submission to God the Father, complete obedience to the cross. It is always a win-win situation when we fully submit to the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ. The key, always abiding and being in complete alignment with our Lord Jesus Christ. Like the Trinity who are always in alignment with each other, we can only fully experience heaven coming down to earth if we are in complete alignment with our Lord Jesus Christ. Going back to the case of Mr. J, because I put myself into his shoes, even his case was a losing case. I fought it with passion and conviction. When I empathized with Mr. J, it was a totally different ball game for me. Through God's help. And because I fought this case with so much passion and conviction, even though it was a losing case, I was able to legally delay the execution of judgment by filing the appropriate appeal in the Court of Appeals. When I saw him last in the Philippines in 2012, after 15 years, when the case was decided by the lower court, he and his family were still occupying the lot. I am not sure if as of today, he and his, still, his family are still on the lot. If they are still there, then it's already more than 20 years that he and his family are in the lot in controversy. By the way, the fear that Mr. J's case would give me a bad start to my low career because I lost actually became the opposite. My passion and conviction in court during the oral argument gave the public an impression and belief that I won the case. After Mr. J's case, I started receiving many referrals for clients. Brethren, I am a sinner and I can have passion and conviction to fight for a case of a client? How much more with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? He gave his life for us. Not only that he is in the same shoes with us being fully man, he is also fully God. And with resurrection powers to reverse the things in our lives. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the great I am. The same God that spoke to Moses in the burning bush the same God who parted the Red Sea, dried up the Jordan, caused the walls of Jericho tumbling down, and we can go on and on. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I pray that this truth will ignite our prayer life with much passion and conviction. As the Lord's prayer said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We need not die. The experience heaven. We can bring heaven down here on earth through the constant abiding in and alignment with our Lord Jesus Christ, our high priest and king.